Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. And each week, Pastor Nanette Christofferson and I try to provide a brief introduction to two of the upcoming uh, Bible readings assigned for Sunday. In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at our Old Testament first lesson, Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 20, for Sunday, September 4th, 2022. Uh, we're going to do a little background uh, leading into our lesson. This is the conclusion of the great wilderness journey. Uh, Moses is getting ready to prepare to pass the baton to Joshua uh, because Moses had disobeyed God and part of the consequence was he didn't get to go into the promised land. Uh, he took them to the edge and Joshua is the one who's going to lead them, uh, the 12 tribes, into the promised land. Uh, so we're at the conclusion of 40 years uh, from the uh, exodus at the Reed Red Sea in Egypt uh, and then, uh, then all that time in the Sinai. Uh, Moses has led them into what's called Moab in the Transjordan area east of the Promised Land. And here he's going to offer final instruction and renewal of the covenant between God and God's chosen people. Uh, we need to remember that the book Deuteronomy means, means second law. And, uh, and that means that the, that the Ten Commandments were given a second time after the people of God had disobeyed God in the wilderness. And, um, and so uh, this is just kind of a, a reinforcement of what was said at the beginning. And it really is linked to uh, the Ten Commandments, but most of all, the First Commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. In chapter 29, we get uh, Moses calling the people of Israel, uh, and then he, then he begins. You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land. So the plagues, the Passover, the crossing of uh, the sea. Uh, and, uh, and But to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind to understand, or eyes to see, or ears to hear. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. The clothes on your back have not worn out, and the sandals on your feet have not worn out. You've not eaten bread, and you've not drunk wine or strong drink, so that you may know that I am the Lord your God. God has provided for them over these 40 years. God has protected them over these 40 years. And even when they've been grumbling and disobedient, and there's been some consequences of all that behavior, God has stuck with them. Because God made a promise to Abraham that he was going to bless Abraham's descendants and make Abraham's descendants into a great nation so that the world might be blessed through them by giving them the knowledge of who God is. But we get a warning, and we shouldn't be surprised there's a warning because as we've already read from Genesis to Deuteronomy, the people of God struggle in being faithful and obedient. Verse 14, I'm making this covenant sworn by an oath, not only with you who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here with us today. You know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you passed. You've seen their detestable things, the filthy idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold that were among them. It may be that there is among you a man or a woman or a family or a tribe whose heart is already turning away from the Lord our God to serve the gods of those nations. It may be that there's among you a root sprouting poisonous and bitter growth. The most poisonous and bitter root is that within any of us that will lead us to pursue other gods, to chase after other gods, rather than the God who promises to bless us, turn us into a blessing so that the world might be blessed through us. We know as we continue reading in the Old Testament that this is going to be an endless challenge for the people of Israel to be able to honor, obey, love, and uh, worship the Lord God, uh, Yahweh. And, uh, and, and so we have this warning from Moses as they get ready to transition from wilderness to settling into the promised land that God uh, awaits to give them. Uh, they need to be aware 
There are consequences if they abandon their allegiance to Yahweh. But there's good news here in chapter 30, verses 1 to 5, that even if they do fail, make mistakes, turn away, God will not fail them. God will remain faithful. So we hear this promise. When all these things have happened to you, the blessings and the curses that I have set before you, if you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, and you and your children obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, just as I am commanding you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you, gathering you again from all the peoples among whom the Lord your God has scattered you. Even if you are exiled to the ends of the world, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he'll bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land that your ancestors possessed, and you'll possess it. He will make you more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. As we look over the history of Israel, we know that there was scattering even after they entered into the Promised Land. Around 621, 622 BCE, the Assyrian Empire on their way to Egypt uh, tried to take all 12 tribes out of Israel and, uh, and put them into exile. The northern kingdom, uh, made up of 10 tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel, were taken off into exile. And then in 586 BCE, uh, the Babylonians came, and they did accomplish the destruction of the walls of Jerusalem and the temple of Yahweh in Jerusalem, and the remaining two tribes were taken in exile. But then in 536 BCE, an edict by King Cyrus of Persia allowed these descendants of exiles or exiles to return and to rebuild. And that's when the second temple was re, be, began to be constructed. So we see God being faithful even when people have been displaced, uh, diaspora, exile. And even today, the people of Israel held, held tight to this kind of promise. Because in 1948, after World War II, uh, the nation of Israel was reestablished by, uh, the, uh, uh, by the League of Nations. And, and so uh, in 1948, Israel became a state again, whereas we know the people came from all over the world because they'd been scattered through various diaspora, scattered into Europe, into Asia, into South America, uh, even into the United States. And so, uh, and so they come back. And so here, whenever Israelites come back into the nation of Israel, it's a sign of God being faithful to this promise made so long ago, this covenant. We see in 30 verses 6 to 10 a key link of where are we going to experience prosperity and well-being. Moses lays it out. Love the Lord with all your heart and soul. Obey and observe all, God, all, all God's commandments. Trust the Lord with everything you have. And then the signs of prosperity that are evident that you're doing the above three, love, obey, and trust, is long and healthy life, expanding families, growing livestock, and fruitful crops. These are agrarian people. And so they make their living off of the land. And so as you're crops produce, as your livestock produce, as your wives produce, because polygamy is still happening at this point, um, they are signs of you building this nation that God wants you to become and, and be a witness to how God is blessing you so that others will be drawn and attracted to the God that you worship. 11 to 14, surely this commandment that I'm commanding you today is not too hard for you nor is it too far away. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Moses is making it very clear that these people know what God expects. They've been given the tablets. They've been given the Ten Commandments. They've been given the one commandment that matters most. You shall have no other gods before me. And it is part of their identity. And so there's no excuse, no excuse, from not to know what God expects of them in order to bless them 
and turn them into a blessing to the world. There's an exhortation in our lesson, uh, verse, beginning at verse 15, to choose life. See, I've set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I'm commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. Again, choices are always in front of us. Are we going to obey God? follow the commandments that God has given us that really are made to enhance our relationship with God, with our families, and with our neighborhood, with our community? Or are we going to choose to follow our own path and rebel by turning away from God and thinking only about ourselves? There are consequences if we do that, verses 17 to 18. But if your hearts turn away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. So as the Israelites enter into the land, establish themselves, become a nation under King David, only within a hundred years to begin to be chipped away at through the Assyrians, and then the Babylonians, and then a long line of others who occupied their land and controlled them. These words came true. And when the people would say, how did this happen to us? Why would God allow this to happen to us? The response would often be directed back to these words. God told you. God gave you commandments. And there are consequences when you choose to rebel and turn away. Again, there's a reaffirmation to choose life. Verses 19 to 20. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days. So you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Moses is inviting the people to not just think about themselves, but think about their children, ch grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. To remember those who came before them. And to remember that God has called them to be a people for the sake of the world, not just for themselves. And the invitation is to choose life through loving and obeying God. That's it. Loving and obeying God. So what is your legacy? Moses is getting ready to hand over his leadership to Joshua. He knows he'll be left behind as the people inherit the gift of the promised land. What words might we offer to those coming after us that affirm the importance of trusting God, remembering the commandments, and choosing life as God intended? Big questions, ancient questions, but still pertinent to the day that you're living and I'm living right now. God bless you as you listen to these words, as you uh, choose life. Take care. God bless.